It's the single biggest escalation since this entire invasion began 96 hours ago. Russia's new posturing in the wake of Ukrainian resistance and pressure from the West is a worrying sign for the entire world. President Putin has just placed his entire country's nuclear deterrent arsenal on a state of high alert or regime of special duty, as the Russians call it. Russia, a far superior military force than Ukraine, has been frustrated perhaps by the stand the Ukrainians have taken and hasn't been able to make the rapid invasion strides that Russia expected in the initial days. NATO nations have been sending weapons and ammunition to Ukraine to repel Russia's war machine. Moreover, Russia is facing numerous sanctions from nations across the globe, including the US. Moscow has a capability to fire nuclear weapons from air, land and sea. In fact, Russia has the largest arsenal of nuclear weapons in the world. From the Topol M, which is a land-based intercontinental ballistic missile capable of ranges in excess of 11,000 kilometers, or the submarine launched Bulava, which can cover ranges of 8,000 kilometers. In a televised address earlier today, Putin also accused the West of taking unfriendly steps against Russia. Remember, Putin had earlier warned foreign countries not to interfere in his invasion of Ukraine, saying it could lead to consequences they could never have imagined. Уважаемые коллеги, вы видите, что западные страны предпринимают не только недружественные действия в отношении нашей страны в экономической сфере, я имею в виду нелегитимные санкции, о которых все хорошо знают, но высшие должностные лица ведущих стран НАТО допускают и агрессивные высказывания в адрес нашей страны. Поэтому приказываю министру обороны и начальнику генерального штаба перевести силы сдерживания российской армии в режим в особый режим несения боевого дежурства. Just a very quick overview of Russia's frontline nuclear weapons. It's a country with a maximum number of nuclear warheads. Here are some of its frontline strategic weapons at this point of time. The first is an intercontinental ballistic missile called the Topol M, which has a range in excess of 11,000 kilometers. Uh, in fact, there have been lots of open source intelligence images of these weapons actually being put into a state of readiness. The second is called the Bulava. This is an old submarine launched uh, intercontinental ballistic nuclear capable missile which has a range in excess of 8,000 kilometers. The third is an air-launched uh, hypersonic cruise missile called the Kinjal which is an air-launched nuclear capable missile with ranges of up to 3,000 kilometers. These can be launched by either fighter aircraft or bomber aircraft. The questions that we're asking this evening as part of this big escalation, why is nuclear Putin so edgy? What's going on? Why this nuclear flex suddenly on day four? Is he flexing mass destructive muscle at the NATO and the US because of all the sanctions they've sent his way? Are these mind games by Putin in the face of increasing pressure from the West and pressure in favor of Ukraine? Is this Putin posturing amidst an increasing fog of war? So many claims and counterclaims. He wants to send out a strong message of who's really the Dada, who's the boss here. Uh, and as you know, uh, Ukraine is a non-nuclear state. Is this an aggressive move since the rapid invasion that Putin had been hoping for has completely failed? Is this saber rattling to tell Biden and NATO and other world leaders to keep off? Even if they're thinking about intervening, is this a message to them to actually keep off? Now, the five big questions. The five big questions that we are asking right now on India Today in what is by far unanimously the biggest escalation in this entire crisis. With peace talks on the table, why is President Putin flexing nuclear muscle suddenly? Surely with peace talks on the table, there should be a kind of calming effect on everyone. Question two, is Putin posturing to signal that he will not be browbeaten by the West? Will a nuclear push trigger a similar move in NATO and the United States, the US, France and UK are the only NATO states which have uh, uh, nuclear weapons. Does this move in any way bring the world closer to nuclear war? Or is Putin's bark worse than his bite? Is this all about just saber rattling, signaling, muscle flexing, posturing and there nobody's really going to push the button and initiate actual nuclear war? I have with me 
India Today's Raj Shengappa and also senior journalist Sandeep Unithan with me. Raj, I want to quickly come to you first. Why do you think President Putin on day four of this invasion has put his nuclear missiles, nuclear weapons on a state of high alert or regime of special duty, as he's calling it? Well, I think uh, President Putin, in fact, in his first statement, uh, uh, just before the invasion or just uh, during the invasion of Ukraine, uh, did say that the consequences, if there is any sort of intervention from NATO and other countries, hinting that it was, would never be, would never have been seen in the history, entire history that's there. And I think he's, he meant nuclear weapons, though he didn't state it. Now, uh, keeping his forces ready means that he thinks that NATO or some someone is trying to intervene either the US or one of their uh, you know allies uh, in Europe is trying to intervene in the war in Ukraine and I think this is a signal he's saying keep off if if you all intervene then it could get worse yeah and uh, you know there's a lot of posturing in this fog of war I don't think uh, you know maybe there's more bark than there mm -hmm. is bite in in that statement but clearly, uh, this is a very worrying trend that's there. Yeah. Uh, I do recall, um, you know, when uh, during the Kargil war, when we had this border skirmish with Pakistan, both sides kept their nuclear weapons ready. And I think that's the danger of, of these kind of wars where uh, you, you presume that they would not do something as foolish as that. But uh, you never know what could happen. What are the consequences as things go forward? Sandeep, is, is uh, President Putin's bark worse than his bite? Why do you think he's, you know, placed his nuclear weapons, his arsenal in this regime of special duty? You know, a nice euphemism for a heightened state of operational alert. It's a big move. Well, absolutely, Shiv. And this is uh, an almost unprecedented escalation. And now there are two ways of looking at it. The first, of course, is that there has been a uh, an increase in the tempo of statements if you see uh, mm. uh, just two days back uh, the french foreign minister uh, ledrian said that uh, putin should remember that nato also has nuclear weapons now yeah. that's the first time someone used the word nuclear so you could see uh, you could look at president putin's uh, response uh, statement as a response to that uh, statement from france the other way of looking at it is exactly what raj said the fact that things are possibly not going the way President Putin wanted mm. them to. And they're possibly facing unexpected resistance. Um, and uh, uh, this is a move to the rest of the world to kind of asking, ask them to kind of back off, stand down. Don't think of intervening on the side of Ukraine because uh, that, that could mean certain consequences. Yes. And, and this heightened state of alert of the nuclear forces, one can only guess what it could be. It's mm. possibly that uh, these... Uh, launchers, uh, the ground-based launchers, uh, the top all M that you mentioned are possibly going into their uh, launch uh, sites in full public view of, of the satellites, of course, and uh, submarines have begun to sail yeah. out. This is the kind of signaling of the kind that uh, the West will pick up very quickly thanks to the satellite coverage, and I'm sure they're watching all the Russian uh, nuclear assets very closely at this very moment shift. And not to be facetious, but this is major Cold War fields, you know, as the, as the younger generation would probably put it, because that's what's going on here. I want to get a word in from Gaurav Savant, who's our man on the ground in Kyiv, who's been reporting fearlessly through this. Gaurav, you're in Ukraine on day four of this invasion, where across the border in Russia, President Putin has just you know, activated this heightened state of alert of his nuclear forces. What are the reactions on the ground? There's been no official reaction from Ukraine. What are you hearing? It's a huge escalation, even if it's just posturing. Shiv, it's a posturing that on ground is said, uh, is being said is with a very specific message. Uh, day four is where an escalation was uh, anticipated here. Uh, the siege of Kyiv has intensified. In fact, on ground it is being said that between tonight and tomorrow night, there could well be a major offensive uh, on, on, on Kyiv hmm. from multiple flanks. Now, when... Uh, President Putin says that his strategic forces uh, are uh, on a state of alert. Satellites will pick it up. It's a message to NATO countries yes. not to interfere in his escalation 
of of the situation remember mm. there has been a very gradual uh, almost like a textbook uh, uh, you know escalation of the situation each time there's been a escalation they waited to see how would the west react and how would ukraine react will it compel ukraine to come on the talks table will it lead to uh, the ultimate offense uh, the uh, aim that the yes. pre russian president wants which is the regime change here uh, in in ukraine now his main focus is President Zelensky and those who are very close to the mm. North Atlantic Treaty Organization countries need to be replaced by the leadership that will be close to Moscow. Yeah. Should that offensive begin either tonight or in the next 24 to 48 hours, he does not want NATO forces to interfere. And that is why this posturing about, about nukes uh, on Ground Zero, that is the buzz that we're picking up from forces on ground. Okay, uh, so there is buzz over there. A lot is being interpreted as well. Uh, Gaurav, thank you very much uh, for joining me on that, Sandeep. Uh, you know, you've written extensively about nuclear weapons both here and, uh, you know, in the Russian arsenal. Can you explain to our viewers, just break it down for us, when, when we say those, uh, that the nuclear weapons have been placed in a regime of special duty or a heightened state of alert, what does that mean technically on the ground? Are they being moved to a certain place? Are they being fueled? You know, I, I don't want to ask a stupid question, but what does it mean when it says heightened state of alert? Well, uh, uh, Shiv, it means that uh, these uh, missiles would start uh, to be fueled. Mm. Uh, the launch trucks, the Topol in the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, it's, it's a road mobile system. Uh, it's meant to uh, be dispersed so that there is no, uh, you know, fear of a first strike taking them out. This would mean that these gigantic trucks, they're, I mean, simply yeah. some of the uh, largest uh, uh, trucks ever. And these mm. would start to fan out of their bases into their, uh, uh, you know, pre-decided launch areas. And, uh, uh, you know, the fact that fighter jets, the bombers, they have yes. a very large bomber fleet. And in fact, uh, Shiv, Russia has one of the most diverse nuclear arsenals. They not mm. only have the largest nuclear arsenal, but over the last decade or so, they've modernized it extensively. Uh, we're being told something like 70% of the Russian nuclear arsenal is, has been modernized. Mm. A lot of uh, resources have been pumped in. They've uh, been, you know, introducing very new kinds of uh, nuclear weapons, like the Canyon, which yes. is an underwater nuclear torpedo of a kind that the world has never seen before. They've been heavily investing in these kind of platforms. So one uh, uh, can only assume that all of these platforms would start to be, uh, you know, fanned out, would, would start to be pushed out into areas uh, where they would be, they could be launched from. And of course, because nuclear weapons are political weapons yes. and it's all about signaling, this would be done in a way that Western satellites would pick it up very quickly. And uh, this, this kind of, uh, you know, Absolutely. these movements would, would kind of, uh, you know, uh, send out the signal that uh, Putin is intending to send. And uh, so the fact is that yes. this, this kind of a thing, as you mentioned, we've not seen this, these, uh, these kind of statements and indeed these kind of mobilizations of nuclear forces for a very, very long time. Yeah. Shiv. So huge signal that's coming. You know, uh, 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 one might say that Putin's bark is worse than his bite, but when a situation is so sensitive, you know, uh, the, the world is obviously going to sit up and take notice because the, the, you know, the other side of it is open nuclear warfare, which is something the world at large cannot afford. Alexander Bratisky, Bratisky is joining us from Moscow. He's a well-respected uh, analyst and observer. Alexander, thank you for being with me. Quick question to you on Putin placing your country's nuclear forces on high alert. How are you seeing this at this time? Well, actually, it is. A show, as, as the colleagues have said, it's a show off of uh, force of the nuclear force yeah. for the West not to interfere. However, of course, any usage of those nuclear weapons from any side will definitely provoke a war. In the Russian military doctrine, it says that the Russia, if Russia is attacked by the conventional forces, it can use forces to retaliate. In the Soviet doctrine, there was different. That was if Russia, uh, Soviet Union never uh, actually stated that would never use nuclear forces first. Yes. Means uh, Russian Federation will also be destroyed in case of this war. So I understand President Putin understands that for sure. Yes. So he is actually trying to show off the West. But I would like also to comment that negotiations mm. are to start with the Ukrainian side. So that's a very conflicting message. So let's do the negotiations. And here I am having nuclear. Uh, nuclear warheads on my side. So 
This is a very conflicting message. It's a conflicting message. Is it possibly about this invasion not having gone, uh, you know, the way that it was actually supposed to? We'll have to wait and watch how this plays out. The biggest strategic nuclear hand has been played by President Putin, seen as the aggressor, the invader in this entire crisis that's playing out. Sandeep, Raj Chengappa, Alexander, thank you very much for being with me. Very valuable to be able to decode one of the biggest the biggest, most hostile moves at a time when the world is fully invested in this crisis, which could very well spill over and become a global conflict. Volodymyr Zelensky, a name that's become familiar to millions around the world in the last few days. The president of Ukraine, who's now a huge figure for standing up to President Putin of Russia. Well, he's also emerged as an internet favorite after all videos of his earlier avatar as a performer and a comedian at a celebrity dance show and his comedy shows have gone by. An unparalleled journey from a comedian to president to national hero. The show's popularity won Zelensky the presidency. <laughs> Zelensky, who started his political career in 2018, was a comedian by profession. Zelensky rose to prominence with the release of his 2015 political comedy drama called Servant of People. In the series, Zelensky played a high school history teacher who accidentally becomes the president after his video of ranting against government corruption goes viral. Incidentally, in the show, Zelensky also stands up against Russian intimidation. The show's popularity won Zelensky the presidency. The question is, how far will Putin go to stamp his authority? And does Zelensky, a product of democracy, have the will to continue the fight if Ukraine were to suffer losses? But for now, Zelensky is an image of sheer grit and bravery, leading and driving his country against a superpower, fighting back the war and motivating Ukraine. With Rajesh Pawar and Gaurav Savant in Ukraine war zone, Bureau Report, India Today. The war in Ukraine continues to be India Today's number one story and we won't be Moving away from this story anytime soon. All the biggest updates right here. Stay with us. It continues on the other side.